Hi, my name is Christian Vidal. I'm from AppSense Pre-Sales UK. Today I want to take you through the AppSense Performance Manager product and just give you an overview of a basic configuration for either a VDI or a terminal server environment. So in the video I'll be covering a couple of topics. The first one will be share factors and how they work and how you can apply them. AppSense has painted the thread throttling technique and showing you how that works and the impact that can have. Physical memory control, and lastly the memory optimizer functionality, which allows us to increase density of users within a terminal server environment. Okay, so here we have the performance manager console already open and a configuration already loaded, which is a blank default one. This configuration would typically apply to most terminal server and VDI environments to improve performance or improve the quality of service as most of the settings in here are geared towards doing that automatically. You can see on the left hand side we have the system account, administrators already stipulated and then other users. The system account is given a share factor of high because it's the most important account on the system and needs to run critical processes to maintain the operating system. Built-in administrators, if they are not logged in or using their session, are given a low share factor. This is to reduce the overhead of having the user logged in and giving more resources back to the pool to be shared amongst other users on the box. If they are logged in, then we give them a high, as typically an administrator, when they are logged in, are doing critical procedures onto the box to maintain it. Other users are given a share factor of normal. Otherwise, again, if they're not logged in or using the box, they're given a share factor of low, again, to return resources to the pool available to other users. Share factors directly affect the base priorities of processes. So by stipulating a high share factor, you're saying this user or this application requires a higher share factor on the box than other processes. Other things you'll see on the box are global resources. So here you can see that we have memory optimizer and thread throttling. The thread throttling technology has been patented by AppSense and as you can see from the graph is there to clamp processes or threads that are behaving badly. By default when the box is at 100% for two seconds or longer we will clamp any threads or processes which are 40% or above and hold that clamp for 10 seconds. Once that 10 seconds has passed we'll then lift the clamp. If the box then goes back to 100% we'll then perform the same task again. This allows us to give a 10% breathing space to the box for administrators or other processes to make use of the CPU. The memory optimizer is purely to be used within a terminal server environment. Its main aim is to actually reduce the, the size of the page file. By doing this, we can directly affect the number of users which log onto the box. As you can see, we do an analysis schedule which identifies DLLs which have been rebased multiple times. The optimizer schedule then goes through and makes changes to the box and copies the DLLs to our own hidden cache onto the system drive. Whenever those DLLs are then referenced, we then repoint them back to the one copy of the DLL rather than the multiple copies. We can also include side components, which is critical for being able to optimize Microsoft Office. The last piece of functionality I'll actually touch on is the physical memory control. The physical memory control allows us to trim the physical memory of an application when required. Now by default we will do this when the desktop is locked, when it is idle, or the session is disconnected for standard users. This again allows us to reduce the amount of memory that's being used by the user session and increase the available memory to other user sessions. What I'm going to do now is actually show you a demonstration of how all these bits of functionality work in conjunction to improve a user's experience on a box. Here I have Windows XP session without having Performance Manager run. As you can see, everything is normal and running as it should be, standard Windows. I'm now going to max out the CPU of the box by running calculator. By performing a simple sum 
and calculator, we're able to maximize the CPU usage. As you can see here, calc.exe is now taking 100% of the box and will continue to do so until I end this process. So, as we've all seen with internal server environments and in, within some desktop environments, when the box is at 100%, it starts becoming sluggish. As you can see, I've now clicked on Microsoft Word. And it will now take some time to actually load. This is because the base priorities are all the same. So Windows is having trouble juggling which processes need to be at the top of the queue to be processed for the user. As you can see, Word still hasn't taken much CPU because Calculator is still hijacking the CPU usage. Slowly its memory usage is being increased as it's slowly being able to load onto the user session. And there we go, finally have Microsoft Word loaded. Also note the amount of memory that Word's using as well. It's using almost 20 meg just to load up and sit there idly. What we'll do now is actually close all these processes, enable Performance Manager on the box, and you'll be able to see the, di the difference in experience a user will have with a high CPU. I'm just going to end the calculator process and close down Microsoft Word. Okay, so now I'm just going to remotely start the Performance Manager Agent Service. And if we go back to my Windows XP box, I'm going to run Task Manager. And immediately you'll see that we have a few changes in Task Manager. First of all is the base priority is now different. This is the share factor technology kicking in. 20 times a second will calculate where a process should sit in the process queue. This enables us to give users a good quality of service. So when they click on an application to load, it will go to the head of the queue, be processed, and then be placed back into the queue, ready to be processed again. So now let's run up Calculator. And do the same calculation to max out the box. So what we'll see now is that Calculator has been set to a low base priority. So what we're saying is we're allowing this process to take as much CPU as it wants but it can't have it as often as it would like as we've dropped the base priority of the process. What you'll also notice is that rather than getting a flatline graph which you normally would with a process maxing out the CPU we actually get these, these peaks and troughs. This is the thread throttling technology coming in ensuring that the box is not hijacked by a process or multiple threads. So let's now word, load Word and see the memory usage. Word will now load in a quick manner and you can see the memory will now drop down to less than what it was originally without Performance Manager. As you then use the application, the memory will slowly increase. This doesn't hamper Word operating at all, it just allows it to start with the lower amount of memory and putting every memory which wasn't being used initially out into the page file ready to be used.
So as you can see, there's the benefits of Performance Manager in allowing the user to have a consistent quality of service within their session. What I'm going to take you through now is making some changes to your Performance Manager configuration for certain environments. If we come back to the Performance Manager configuration, you can see within my default rule that I'm not having any trimming here. What we like to do within terminal server environments, and in some cases VDI environments, is enable memory trimming, but only enable it for process startup. So now what will happen is when a user runs an application, when the application first loads, memory will be trimmed, which is what you saw previously with Microsoft Word. Other than that, as mentioned earlier, we will trim the memory when they're disconnected, idle or locked. You can add in more conditions to trim the memory, but typically we don't advise on these as the more increase in trimming, the more activity you're putting on the page file. So typically what we have here with regards to physical memory control is optimal for a terminal server environment. With our thread throttling control, typically I would drop this down to about 20% depending on how many CPUs you have and how many processors you have running on your box which may potentially take out the CPU at any one time. So by dropping this to 20% we're saying do not interact with any processors or threads which are below 20% of the CPU total. If they are then these ones will only be affected by the clamping technology. In a terminal server environment, we need to use the memory optimizer. A typical setup we would do for this is to do an analysis every 60 minutes for the first couple of weeks. This is to allow the performance optimizer to learn the applications and learn what DLLs need to be optimized aggressively. The optimization schedule should be set to every day and then at some point after hours. And this sometimes can have an effect on box performance. So it's best to put it after hours when a batch optimization process can be done. I'd also normally include signed components for Microsoft Office and any network components for any applications which run across the network. After a period of two weeks, you can then increase the amount of time between analysis to roughly between 120 to 180 minutes as it would have had enough time to learn the applications and DLLs it needed to optimize. In a VDI environment we actually don't require any memory optimizer technology. This is because memory optimizer technology only really makes any benefit in a multi-user environment like a terminal server or a Citrix Zen app environment. So to switch this off all we need to do is come into resource setup options and this will give us a list of all the different technologies. Here we can switch off the memory op optimizer technology. One thing you need to remember with your performance manager rule sets is that every rule is read from the top down. Therefore the first rule it hits which is true it will apply. Now I may wish to add applications to my configuration and therefore knowing what I know about the rule sets I need to add this in the correct place for it to apply correctly. So first of all I need to create an application group, give it a name, add in the executable for my application. If you do put in the full path here the rule set will only apply for that executable running from that, from that full path you've specified. So typically I will just put in the name of the executable to make sure that any limitations I put on performance will apply for that executable running from any location. Once I've done that I'm going next and at this point I'm not going to allocate any resources yet. So you can see I have my desktop apps group there. I'm now going to add this to my other users group and there we go. So any users other than administrators or system that runs calc.exe I can then apply limits to on memory or CPU or even disk. Make sure that the desktop apps is above other apps as the other apps is a catch-all for any processors outside of this group. Again, as I mentioned, 
the rule set runs from the top down. So if I ran calc, it should apply the settings from here. If I had the desktop apps underneath the other apps, catch all group, then my settings would never apply because the other apps rule would be the first one that would be true. So in summary, what I've shown you within this video is that our share factor technology ensures there's a quality of service for the user session, ensuring that when a user does run an application, it's put to the head of the queue and make sure that it gets a time slice of CPU to ensure it loads up quickly for the user to begin using it straight away. Our thread throttling technology, which is patented by AppSense, and this stops threads and processes flatlining the box, making the box unusable. Our physical memory control, by reducing the amount of physical memory used by an application, we can increase the amount of available RAM on the Windows box, and thus the amount of RAM that's available to user sessions. And our memory optimizer technology. This increases the user density within terminal server. On average, this will gain around 20 to 30% extra users on a terminal server environment box. As always, you can get hold of the Performance Manager software from myappsense.com and download it once you've registered. Thank you very much.